Hi, my name is John Mount, and I'm a trainer and consultant for a company called WinVector LLC, which specializes in data science, training, consulting, and research, usually using Python and R. What I'd like to talk about today is a data science topic called Simpson's Paradox. Now, normally I don't like teaching probability paradoxes, because really they're never paradoxes. They're where intuition differs from certain mathematics, the mathematics often being the right one, and it's a matter of convincing the students something they don't believe in goes wrong, and then showing them how to fix it. So a number of these paradoxes are actually a big loss of class time. However, Simpson's paradox is very much worth teaching because it's a pathology we see in A-B testing, and I've actually worked out there's some certain situations where it's almost inevitable. So knowing about it is important. It's not just something that might happen, it's something that's quite likely to happen. Now, in the context of A-B testing, we often have a treatment group and a control group. The idea is the treatment group might be a new or better treatment or web page or advertisement, which we think works better, and the control group is the old one, so sort of a challenger champion uh, sort of thing. In this case, let's say we've been running our experiment for quite a while. So we have our exposure count, how many times we've been serving this new, say, advertisement or web page, and like I said, we've been running this for quite a while, and the treatment was good. This was an actual real improvement. So we've actually switched our A-B testing facility, our controlled experiment facility, so that we're giving most of the traffic to the treatment group. So we're very late in the experiment. So maybe 9,000 units a day to treatment and only 1,000 to control. Control's really on its way out. We'll probably shut it down some point. Now, what we're hoping to measure is that treatment has more conversions than control. Conversions being the action we're hoping to measure, be it clicking on the ad, buying something or something like that. So basically, the 9,000 treatment exposures lead to 180 conversions and the 1,000 control exposures lead to 10 conversions. And of course, these are easy to work out as rates. This is a 2% response rate, which is astoundingly great. This is a 1% response rate, which is still pretty respectably large. Now, let's say we've been running this experiment in California, where we developed this. Now, we are asked to move this uh, procedure into a new geography, say, New York. And maybe we're sort of a distributed business that New York might be a different set of management. So they want to take on this new improved web page for their work. And they start out how you'd normally do an A-B test with the minority of the traffic going to treatment, the challenger, and the majority of the traffic going to the previous champion, our current implementation web page. And when they run this experiment, they see the following number of conversions. So they see a 4% improvement, or 4% conversion rate in the treatment group, and a 3% conversion rate in the um, control group. So and basically, the important thing to abstract is, or to my mind, the important thing to abstract is, in both cases, treatment dominates control. We're clearly dealing with different populations, but uh, basically we are seeing the same effect, that the treatment or change is an improvement over control. So in some sense, even though the populations are working differently, we're seeing the experiment confirmed. All is well until we build the combined data set. It would be quite natural, especially in a business analytics situation, to aggregate all of this data into one report. And let's go ahead and do that. I, we're just gonna add everything up. And it's important to remember, of course, counts add up, not rates. So basically we have, um, in this aggregated set, 10,000 in treatment, 10,000 in control. The number of conversions is 220, which is 180 plus 40, and 280, which is 10 plus 270. And here's the problem. 
treatment now has a 2.2% conversion rate. Control has a 2.8% conversion rate. So control dominates. Literally reversing the observation in both of the groups that make it up. It's not like we added any more data. We observed in California, treatment dominates control. In New York, treatment dominates control. Yet when we aggregate the data, the trend reverses. Well, what happened is, is basically we violated the principles of controlled experiments in the aggregated data. This is actually the wrong answer. There's no paradox. These two are actually the right answer, and this is the wrong answer. Now, which one's the right or wrong answer depends on your domain. This, it could be the case that the aggregate is the right answer, but for our domain, the aggregate is the wrong answer. And how do we know it's the wrong answer? It's because this combined set is not a proper controlled experiment or A-B test. In an A-B test, a proper one, the only thing that should be differing between the two groups is whether the treatment and control is whether you change the web page or whatever effect you're attempting to measure. However, in this um, combined set, not only is whether you're in treatment or control differing from row to row, but I also have a very good chance of guessing which region or geography you are, that most of the control data is coming from New York, and most of the treatment data is coming from California. So this is literally a confounding variable that we should not have in a proper A-B test. So if these two subtests didn't even exist, this green test or this aggregate test would still be wrong because what differs from treatment and control is two things. Our choice of web page, which was our experimental design, and also this geography, which it turns out to be important. So of course we can't tell whether this composite test is measuring the effects of geography or the effects of the web page. Where again, for each of these tests, we're hoping the only thing that differs between treatment and control is the design of the web page. Therefore, any difference in measurement between treatment and control can hopefully be attributed to the web page. So I hope you enjoyed that, and um, I hope you don't consider that a paradox anymore. Again, this is classically called Simpson's paradox, that a trend that is seen in two or more subpopulations reverses when the data is aggregated. And you notice we don't have to add even any alien data. Just the data that we thought did treatment better than control, treatment better than control, when aggregated, um, blows up. And it's usually due to basically the sub-studies not matching in their distribution of treatment to control. And when they aggregate, we now can tell which sub-study we are, that basically an extra label gets exposed. Anyway, thank you very much for your time, and this is my example of Simpson's Paradox. Again, I'm John Mount from WinVector LLC, and we would love to help you with any of your data science projects or data science training. Thank you.